Hey, welcome to the Lux channel. So it looks like uh, after watching a uh, couple of my uh, video episodes um, about uh, you know TCP congestion algorithms, I covered about uh, Linux, uh, you know kernel uh, network stack, uh, about uh, various uh, congestion algorithms, and as well as a um, uh, couple of my you know toffee uh, research videos. Uh, one of the viewers have uh, asked me a question about uh, you know tail drop. Uh, this is a interesting phenomena in networking. I even covered about buffer bloat and various other concepts. So in case if you are interested, uh, I can uh, recommend you guys to watch the same because uh, even this is uh, more or less you know related to that. So you can find the video about uh, buffer bloat somewhere in videos or research over there so anyway i can uh, you know do one thing i can search that uh, video and uh, i can attach yeah you can see here this is the buffer bloat uh, video yeah i can attach this uh, url so that uh, uh, after watching this video or while watching this video you can also watch this interesting episode because more or less it is sort of you know connected so i thought let me discuss about this interesting phenomena called tail drop i can discuss with in relationship with routers like this as well as i got some few props so that we can really go through exactly what it causes and you know in which way it can be you know sort of addressed so tail drop you can search about it in uh, wikipedia you can see here and uh, if you go through that you know wikipedia documentation it is uh, you know sort of somewhat clear but uh, the way you visualize this phenomena it really makes sense because uh, you know <laughs> it happens uh, uh, whenever there is some kind of a congestion in a uh, network appliance or a sort of networking uh, router and uh, in this uh, in for instance we take this uh, router we have uh, you know we have the wan port and uh, we have the lan port so let's assume uh, the wan port or the internet uh, side wherever you connect this router is uh, uh, a bit you know low speed network of course this is a 100 mbps port but uh, let's for example uh, let's assume your internet connection is 5 mbps or uh, 10 mbps or 20 mbps so there is a sort of a drop and let's assume this lan port is either 100 mbps or you know 1 gigabit <laughs> ethernet port so you have a sort of you know fluctuation and uh, it's like a you know sort of potential difference so at this instance uh, obviously there should be a sort of you know drop in performance whenever these packets are going from lan to wan and this is not going to be an issue whenever a packet is coming from you know wan to lan because there is no starvation issues because the wan side is at much lower speed versus you see at that you know lan side so when such a drop occurs uh, uh, what happens is uh, that's when uh, you know you can hit this issue called as a tail drop however there are few ways to look this issue uh, you can see this issue in relationship with uh, uh, you know udp uh, uh, you know stream of packets uh, and you can see uh, how it degrades in a case like a tcp connected network so each scenario it depends on how it affects the performance so if you get back uh, to the you know wikipedia documentation you can see here they mention that the loss of packet causes a tcp sender to enter slow start and which reduces uh, throughput in the tcp session until the sender begins uh, uh, begins to receive acknowledgments again it increases the congestion window so finally if you kind of digest this it is quite uh, simple what is that it happens is whenever you have some uh, you know bunch of packets held up in the router uh, network packet queue so this happens of course as i say the flow from lan to wan but not necessary from you know wan to lan uh, i am giving just an example this can happen in any two ports so whenever there is a sort of pile up of packets and uh, it is getting piled up because of some congestion or you are connecting from you know this router to some sort of you know mobile uh, network it can be some sort of slow 3g link or something like that so if that is the case 
obviously if you see the mobile network it may be just 5 mbps or at the max 10 mbps or just 1 or 2 mbps versus you have this port is at 100 mbps so there will be sort of pile up of packets and uh, it again depends uh, let's ignore this router let's assume this is some kind of um, you know 3g router you find it uh, uh, these days where you get a sort of you know compact router where you can connect to your mobile uh, you know dongle or something and uh, you know in that situation this is more amplified versus something like this because this is as far as this router is concerned there will be never going to be a pile up of packets because even if it is connected to a low speed internet it is just going to dump it out at this 100 mbps speed and the other receiving end is going to throw away you know the pile up of packets so this is not going to occur in this router but this may happen somewhere in a, you know some sort of a router like what i described before or else if you assume in this router as well if you see here there is again sort of you know potential difference if you see this lan port uh, which is essentially this wifi uh, antenna uh, or the wifi uh, port versus this lan port the wired port so the wired port is going to support the theoretical 100 mbps speeds versus this it is much lesser than this i mean this router is quite old so this is uh, uh uh this is uh, 56 uh, mbps or so or more uh, less than that it is quite old router actually so this is going to be much uh, slower so in any case of course even if you compare modern uh, wifi routers uh, you may have these uh, network ports wired network ports at uh, operating at gigabit speed versus uh, wireless uh, it may be at 300 mbps or something like that so let's not go much in depth so whenever there is a some kind of you know gap of performance there may be an issue with congestion and then you may end up having an issue like this so tail drop so the tail drop to understand better the name itself suggests that it is a sort of ending phase of that uh, uh you know network buffer uh, the tail of the network buffer getting filled up and after that the pa- packets are getting dropped so to understand better i got this small short glass and i got some uh, you know flask of water so i can just quickly demonstrate even before we get this abacus as a next prop so i got this uh, short glass so what i can do is i can just fill it with some water so i can uh, fill this with water you can imagine this is your uh, uh network packet buffer uh, uh, the wan side or whatever it is getting congested so you can imagine the same so as the packets flow into the uh, you know buffer okay or the packet queue so as it getting uh, you know uh, populated over here so this is the producer in this scenario whenever you deal with any buffers it can be some kind of hard disk buffer or any sort of buffers you you have a situation like producer and consumer so this is about it so you have this flask is a huge reservoir of water this is the producer which contains lot of water let's say imagine this contains an infinite amount of supply so it contains lot of water but this is a finite queue or a finite buffer so uh, whenever i drink this water you know i'm consuming this water out of this buffer so as it you know produces the uh, you know as the producer uh, you know populates this buffer if the consumer is consuming it at less Uh, pace than what it can produce obviously you are going to have a sort of you know overfill so let's assume i'm just drinking this way and again it is populating this buffer so after some time <laughs> once i stopped uh, you know drinking this or else if i reduce the rate of you know consumption it is going to overflow you know it is going to overflow and it is going to spill and it is going to spill whatever the packets at its stop or at its tail so that's where you have that uh, term called a uh, tail drop so this is the tail end of that uh, packet queue because this uh, you can imagine this is like a fifa or something like that whichever goes first inside it is going to pop out and it is going to go through that uh, hardware uh, you know nicard interface or network port so this is what happens so as i consume so let's assume i'm just consuming from the bottom not from the top so <laughs> that's what happens in the real you know network uh, you know device scenario so as i consume this is well and good because i have consumed 
even before it's built but if i don't consume and if i continue to pour and that's when the problem starts so it is now overflowing this you can see here it started overflowing so this is where the packets you can imagine it's getting dropped whichever is at its top or its tail end so this way uh, we can uh, clearly see uh, the issue with uh, tail drops however there is uh, one interesting phenomena is let's assume uh, from the remote end each such you know producer is uh, let me just pull another flask i got one more flask yeah yeah see here i got uh, one more flask similar to that other one so let's assume each one is a you know connected tcp session so now what is happening is uh, whenever the tail drop occurs that's what they mentioned in the wikipedia that the tcp uh, connection state enters into that uh, you know slow start and then again it is going to drop the performance of that uh, tcp connectivity so if such a thing happens with one connection it is going to degrade in case if the device uh, gets to that uh, or the queue gets to that tail drop situation uh, you know you have simultaneous tcp connections uh, they are trying to fill the same uh, you know uh, you know remote routers buffer so these tcp connections are at your uh, you know local uh, pc or a device or some kind of a server so you know each time this is filling here and simultaneously even some other you know tcp session is filling this you know buffer so whenever the tail drop occurs due to the congestion or whatever is the situation so whenever the tail drop occurs it is going to one shot degrade the performance of all this tcp connections and uh, this is going to severely affect your network performance so this is more of a serious issue for you know connected uh, uh, you know uh, Uh, you know protocol scenario like tcp versus something like udp because udp can tackle in some other ways uh, you can uh, do in application layer of course you can uh, manage the congestion and other stuff uh, which is uh, i don't say that it is not possible with udp because udp is so naive that uh, it is not doing in the kernel layer it is up to the responsibility of the end user how they control the udp session so you can still uh, cope up with udp and in case you have some kind of a udp session or some key pair like messages if there is some kind of uh, you know drop in packets you can regulate its flow and other stuff but in the case of tcp it is going to entirely degrade the performance because of you know maybe one session is too greedy and it is getting packets dropped and uh, it is going to further congest the link let me keep this down it is going to sort of you know congest the link and it is going to degrade the performance so again uh, to demonstrate even further <laughs> let me pull this abacus which i quite often in various uh, video episodes so you can imagine each you know line of uh, you know beats or string of beats is one tcp session so let's imagine uh, here is where it gets very interesting so here is where let's imagine this tcp session have transferred up to this extent some kind of file download or something you can imagine versus the other tcp session which just started okay it just started let's imagine all this tcp sessions are bound from you know lan to wan or you know bound from this side to the other side let's not imagine what is happening from other side to this side so So let's imagine all of them are bound from this side to other side so the majority of the data goes from this side to other side so the, from the other side to this side you may get only acknowledgement or something like that so each tcp connection is at a different uh, you know state so this is almost about to end this is uh, just almost started and this we can imagine that it just started just now and this is somewhere at the middle point this is uh, completed at 60% this is completed at 60% some 40 or 30% it is remaining here and this is at uh, you know some 70% or 60% it is still remaining this is just uh, you know about to complete it's just one bead left it is just about to complete whereas this it just started versus this is at around 50 50 as so this has uh, 50% more packets yet to be sent so imagine that some kind of a situation like tail drop occurs in the network packet uh, 
queue or packet buffers then what is going to happen is it is going to suddenly affect the performance and it is not a big deal for uh, you know something like this because it is still in the middle uh, you know part whereas in this case it is going to affect in a different way versus this for that single uh, you know couple of packets because you can imagine this is like you know 95 percent of transfer has been done it's just 5 to 10 percent it is remaining so for that 5 to 10 percent it is going to disrupt that you know connection and it is just to degrade the performance itself so it has to wait for a long time before everything settles down and in this case the entire session is going to suffer you know performance because it's just you know that congestion have hit and then you get that various uh, issues uh, as a result or a byproduct of that congestion so whereas in this case it is going to affect in a different way because it is at 50 50 percent so it is it is going to degrade it is going to drop the packet rate and it is going to affect the network uh, you know performance so this is an interesting phenomena this is uh, something uh, as i said it is always interesting and this is something i have highly stressed even uh, one of the episode you can uh, uh, yeah in this episode i have mentioned that always whenever you do some uh, uh, tcp analysis uh, uh, often i find an issue with any published uh, phd uh, thesis or any such documentation is uh, they chart uh, they plot uh, various charts uh, with some kind of sawtooth pattern and they mention uh, how to uh, you know how to analyze uh, some kind of a tcp performance and uh, how we can improve or how uh, it changes the characteristics or something like that and they often uh, put just one tcp session or they use some hyperf and uh, then they plot the chart how is the connection performance and other stuff so the problem is whenever you do that you know never do with one single tcp session because if you see a real world situation something like this you get hundreds of you know connections uh, you know happening simultaneously via connected devices so whenever you do such tests you need to do with multiple tcp sessions or maybe perhaps five or ten tcp sessions before you conclude and get any sort of you know uh, you know uh, research analysis or you know test data so this is where you need to test with multiple connections each connection as you can see here will be at a different uh, state one will be just uh, you know uh, getting uh, completed one is just you know about to start and things like that so this is where it gets interesting because this kind of uh, performance degradation affects in a different way with the different uh, you know tcp connections and also again it depends uh, some are uh, uh, you know some are uh, you know um, application dependent uh, it depends on the application what you are using some are uh, uh, like you know file download some are just uh, like uh, some kind of remote mysql db connections and stuff like that so each time based on the application and based on the tcp state it is going to affect the performance and this is what is an interesting thing you need to deeply study and you know the tail drop is an interesting phenomena and uh, you can just do a few things of course to address the tail drop uh, i mean of course we can increase the size of this uh, network uh, packet buffer but again it is not going to fully address anything because uh, the amount of rate getting consumed is going to be the same so if you increase this uh, you know size of this <laughs> network packet buffer maybe perhaps more time i can pour but after some time eventually even that it is going to get filled up and again it is going to hit the same issue so it is quite tricky because uh, if you don't you know consume it fast enough like this and if you are keep producing at a higher rate than you consume it is going to have this issue just increasing uh, you know buffer size is not going to uh, solve anything in this case you know all the time so momentarily yes of course uh, uh, sometimes you may have some kind of uh, you know not so fine tuned buffer size which you can little bit bump it up and check again whether you are hitting upon this uh, packet drops and uh, still it is continuing after you increase the buffer size uh, then you should understand you need some other mechanism to address this maybe you need to, to optimize this network or something else so i don't want to go much in depth about van opt and stuff like that because it is completely off topic 
so you need to take some other measures to address the same but uh, it's uh, basically an issue with uh, you know consumption of these packets it is uh, you know getting uh, sent out into the network because that's where the bottleneck the real bottleneck is so this is where uh, this old uh, episode of mine is quite interesting because in the buffer bloat video i have discussed a situation like the buffer bloat itself is all about when you have excessively huge buffer and you may have some kind of weird issues due to that you know excess large amount of buffer you have it as a packet uh, you know queue so again you need some kind of fine tuning and you need some kind of compromise that the buffer should be huge enough but not too huge and if it is too huge it is again going to pile up you know further issues because if it is too huge as i discussed in the buffer bloat video if you know there is some kind of packet is been sent and it is you know sitting in the buffer even before getting consumed now what happens is if the buffer is too huge this is going to send again a retransmit packet thinking that this packet have been not sent to the remote end and it is going to send the same packet once again and even that you know duplicate packet is going to sit in this buffer and it may do this multiple times so this is quite dangerous actually so that's why you need to have some optimal buffer value to prevent buffer bloat situation so this is something i suggest you to watch this video because extensively i have discussed about the buffer bloat itself but more or less it is interesting to discuss about buffer bloat in uh, this episode about telegram as well so uh, before uh, concluding the same uh, i would like to also mention uh, that uh, this is where it gets very interesting if you have various uh, you know tools uh, Uh, which you can uh, uh, you know self design in case uh, you want it uh, for uh, you know uh, for a specific uh, you know situation you need to visualize that specific scenario and uh, uh, you can uh, do by yourself if if you cannot find anything uh, you know in the public domain or something you can find it uh, in the internet and uh, this is where i just uh, shot uh, a quick video last week or uh, few days ago you can see here i was uh, working on some data profiling and visual analysis uh, the objective of this tool is to uh, do for various things it's just not about uh, network uh, you know packet uh, visualization or something i was working on various scenarios where it can be used it can be used even to uh, for machine learning and ai and stuff like that so i just want some kind of uh, interesting way to visualize uh, raw data so that it makes uh, cognition of this raw data much easier than what you see in any hex editors or some kind of you know uh, wireshark packet uh, analyzer so i just can show you a very quick demo so which you can see of course in my uh, video uh, which i published so you can see here this is a sort of analysis of a client hello uh, uh, packet and uh, this is a server hello uh, packet of ssl data so you can see here and uh, you can also do some uh, you know you can change its pattern and you can see its uh, raw bytes and stuff like that so the thing makes it very interesting is uh, by uh, putting this kind of a pseudo code just like uh, you know nasa puts uh, Uh, for uh, you know visualizing planets and uh, you know uh, suns and galaxies and stuff like that with that the cognition of the information gets easier and easier because if you just see the raw hex bytes you know they look just dumb but if you put some kind of color patterns and stuff like that that's when it gets interesting so if i change it to monochrome so this is uh, a just a tcp add packet you can see here you can uh, Uh, you have the ethernet header and ip and the tcp header and stuff like that but if you see the sort of you know pattern you, you can start on getting some kind of you know um a uh, pattern uh, which you can quickly cognizeize which can be the header and which can be the you know data and stuff like that so if i just switch to http get packet you can see here by looking at this monochrome uh, representation you can see here starting from here somewhere here is its you know header and from there you can see here it is having this http get data because http get is mostly printable characters uh, so you can see it is all at one range versus the headers which may be in uh, zero so some may peak up to ff and stuff like that so it, it has all this sort of you know 
uh, you know ups and downs versus this main application layer data so this is what you know makes the visualization quite interesting so let me keep keep this away and i have done one more thing you can uh, just make it to sort of you know animate and by doing so if you see here if i change the color it gets even more apparent the header part uh, you know looks mostly in a red the shades of red and green versus the http get data so you can see here it is mostly in the same uh, shade of you know green and the blues versus this header part and if i change some other packet you can see here this is http okay even here you can see the header part looks different visually itself you don't need to see raw hex bytes to get this kind of visual clues so this is lot more important whenever you do some kind of deeper analysis it's just a simple example uh, we can just disable this animation and we can Uh, get into something else other than uh, network packet so if you see in this case it's a bitmap in image it's just a regular uh, uh, windows uh, bitmap bmp image so in this case you can see here by looking at this you can quickly understand there is something like a file header over here it's all in uh, one color after that the real bitmap information starts so if you switch it to hex you can see here yeah if you switch it to hex this uh, takes quite time because it is actually really it is uh, refreshing that frames so if you see here you can see the header part and then you have this image information like uh, you know you have that uh, you know color information so if i change it once again to this pattern you can see here uh, each you know line after another line of that bitmap image has this kind of you know distinct pap so this is one row of pixels and this is another row of pixels so by looking at it we can get really good you know visual clue you can see here this is one line this is second line this is third line and so on so on so on so this is quite interesting i was just doing various uh, kind of uh, you know visual analysis this is just a beginning and uh, from there i can use some sort of you know tools like this even to visualize uh, even this uh, you know phenomena like buffer bloat or you know something like a tail drop so i just thought the, i can uh, you know little bit even connect that video as well because somewhere it it is all interlinked whenever i do research whether it is about iot or ai or ml or something somewhere there will be some kind of interconnection uh, suddenly my videos uh, sometimes it may look like off topic but if you really dig deeper somewhere it is all interconnected somewhere i suddenly work on some uh, energy technology suddenly it will be again interconnected to this so because uh, sometimes i work in uh, mesh networks uh, uh you must have seen some videos uh, video episodes i have uh, shot about power and stuff like that because i work on some uh, uh, discrete wireless mesh networks where these devices can be deployed on field with no uh, you know wired uh, network connectivity or no uh, uh, you know power supply connected to the wires so they get directly from wind or solar and they just be like a standalone mesh wireless mesh network so in that case you need to do lot more uh, uh, you know devices these devices have to be energy efficient and stuff like that so it is quite important to get this kind of you know connected research because it that's where projects like this i work on a day to day basis with my clients as a you know architect and uh, you know as a consulting architect <laughs> so that's what it is so with this i would like to conclude this uh, episode uh, if you have anything to discuss uh, uh, be in touch via mail even this is something uh, as i said uh, somebody have watched uh, various uh, episodes on uh, uh, tcp performance and uh, various other uh, my van opt uh, uh, videos and then he sent uh, Uh, some uh, question about the same and uh, from that uh, somewhere it is linked to this tail drop and then i thought uh, let me show this uh, video episode so thanks a lot for joining me stay tuned have a nice day bye bye